Now, across Texas, the issue is... I'm Greg Grugan in Houston. I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas, and this is Texas, the issue is. Our colleague in Austin, Rudy Kosky, is out this Sunday. For the better part of a decade, a dark cloud of potential criminality has hung squarely over the head of Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton in the form of three felony counts of securities fraud. This week, the threat of removal from office and possible prison time simply melted away with a courtroom deal many view as a judicial bullet dodged by the once embattled AG. The state of Texas versus Warren Kenneth Paxton Jr. The Lone Star State's top cop strolled into a Harris County courtroom bearing the burden of three felony fraud charges which have lingered for nine long years. But in a matter of minutes, the criminal allegations that he hawked securities without a license and without disclosing he was being paid were rapidly resolved. And the threat of conviction, disbarment, and removal from office all but lifted. If the contract is violated, you understand, both sides understand, that this court will be setting a very speedy trial. At the end of the day, it is not a plea bargain. He didn't plead. There is no admission of guilt. There will never be an admission of guilt because he's not guilty but we're glad to have this behind us. Instead, the Texas Attorney General agreed to a pretrial intervention contract, otherwise known as diversion, the terms of which include completion of 100 hours of community service, 15 hours of legal ethics training, and most significantly, the payment of at least $271,000 in restitution. Asked why his client Paxton was coughing up the cash if he did no wrong, attorney Dan Cogdell offered a quick response. A good question. Uh, one, of the, one of the answers to that is cheaper than what you'd had to pay me if we went to trial. Special prosecutors Brian Weiss and Jed Silverman said an intense review of the evidence and likely witness testimony convinced them restoring the financial losses suffered by Paxton's alleged victims outweighed rolling the dice with a jury. Restitution first and foremost that was a game changer secondly community service like any other defendant it is no small thing that the victims in this case are going to receive right around three hundred thousand dollars in restitution from Ken Paxton that is no small thing in a way he's been on, on pretrial diversion for the last nine years the Attorney General appeared to agree issuing a statement which read for over a decade, my family and I have been dealing with the ongoing stress of these accusations and are relieved to finally have a resolution in this matter, adding, there will never be a conviction in this case, nor am I guilty. Dealing with a 10-year case looming over our heads was no easy task, end quote. As part of the diversion deal, Paxton agreed to supervision by his prosecutors and to pay the restitution in full within 18 months from personal assets, not political contributions. You cannot use campaign funds to pay personal debts. It is a debt triggered by a prosecution Ken Paxton's lawyer believes should never have occurred. I don't think any of this would have happened but for the fact that he was the attorney general at the time they, they investigated it. The question isn't whether or not who won, what was justice served. And I think the answer to that is unmistakably yes. Stephen, my one word description of what just unfolded, Teflon, as in nothing seems to stick. Stephen, what's your word? Well, you stole my word, so I guess I'll say Kevlar, or there was a movie in the 90s with Tupac called Juice. Kim Paxson definitely has the juice right now. <laughs> All right. A great deal more to talk about when we're joined by Rice political analyst Mark Jones on the other side of this break.